Hello everyone and welcome. Today it's all about Kiri Engine and how to use it um, for 3D scanning of course. Now for this one we're gonna stay in the free version because we know free is nice and there are some premium versions that are nice but we'll stick to the free version right and show you the results as well. Um, so you can get this on the App Store and Google Play which means it's Android and Apple right and you also have a Kiri Engine for web um, but for now, we're going to stick to the phone and to Blender. Um, yes, we will use Blender to actually um, show the model and do a tiny bit of cleaning up as well. And then we'll show you the models I use and some tips and tricks to actually get decent results. Because that seems to be the hard way, the hard kind of thing to get it right. Let's dive in. So to get Kiri Engine, you can just go to your Play Store or Apple Store and search for Kiri Engine. Now I've got this already, but you can click on it, download it, and it'll have it there. Um, and then I'll just open it up and see how it looks. So this is what the default screen looks like. You've got your own scans, your drafts, and some other scans that other people made, I suppose. Um, so I already have some right there. You got Pennywise and a bear. Um, and we'll be creating that today. Um, so stay tuned for how we do that and the tips and tricks on how to do that. So hit plus and you'll be able to make a photo scan, a feature scan or a 3DGS scan. Last two are pro versions. So we're going to be sticking to photo scan because it's free and it works pretty well. So let's hit photo scan and take photos. And here we are. I got Pennywise on a nice little box in front of the window with a lot of light, which is recommended to have a nice lighting. Um, so we can have manual photo mode or auto photo mode, which will take a video basically and then capture images. But I'm going to leave this at manual because I don't like the blurriness of motion blur. Now at the top right, you can switch to manual and auto mode as well. And manual will set you up with exposure settings and stuff like that. And I'll also leave that at auto because auto medic stuff is just nice. So I'm going to start off with the bear and make a full round of the top, more of a top view of your object and then i will suggest make another round of a mid view and if you have enough photos left also make a round of the bottom view of the object and that causes you to capture all those details and to have some nice images to go around the bear the photo limit is 100 in free mode and then you can just go through the images see if there's any ones that are blurry or are off you can delete those and then reshoot those photos and important that you don't have any blurry ones or that you don't have any um photos that are very dark or too bright so just try to keep it nice and consistent or pennywise i did the exact same thing but it's a smaller object so i had to get closer which means you also need to really pay attention to where your focus point is. Make sure that your object stays in focus um, from whichever point you're making this image. All right, so that means just double checking it every photo you shoot. It is important to stay consistent. And at the end, I will go through my images and delete every one of the images that looks off, isn't sharp, has wrong lighting, or is not in the center of the image enough. I think that matters a bit as well um so anything that's blurry anything that just looks weird just make sure to delete it i can't stress this enough consistency is key all the blurry photos will contribute to having a not sharp texture basically and a wrong 3d model right this one's too dark this one's too dark and um, this one's too dark as well. So anyone that's just too dark make sure to delete it you can always capture new images too bright that one's wrong, this one's a bit off as well. So if you're not sure, just make sure to delete them because once again, consistency is key. Then when you're done, you can just click on the next button on the bottom right. Then we can just name this whatever we want. I'm going to name it Pennywise. And then we've got our images and some settings. Now, what I would recommend is to have a look at auto object masking, which is basically going to make sure that your background is going to be filtered a bit and your um, object is going to be masked out. So the table below Pennywise, for example, won't be occluded. I'll show that later as well. File format, of course, choose what you want. I'm going to just keep this at OBJ works very well. 
and we can then just hit upload, right? And it's going to upload all of your images. And then once it's uploaded, it will start processing. Once processing is done, it will appear in your scans as finished. And you'll be able to download it as your 3D file. And you can just preview that there and you'll have some options and you can just behold your first 3D scan, which is looking quite detailed for this one, right? It's, it's working out quite well um, with 100 photos of the free version, which is quite perfect. Now you've got some options for cropping. Let's see what that does. And we can actually crop, for example, the floor. We can move that up a bit and you can also rotate your floor panel, for example, and um, but in this case, that's not needed. Um, make sure to just have it cropped well and nice enough to forward it to Blender. Um, so once you're ready, you can actually export this free export in this case, and we've got some settings. <laughs> Those are basically pro, and we can then just export it and send it over to Blender. Then in Blender, we can just go to File, Import, and well, locate the file that you've saved it as. In this case, OBJ. I'm going to open OBJ, locate where I saved them, which is somewhere on my... <laughs> the, there it is, 3D scans, and then I save them as Pennywise and Bay respectively. Um, so let's go Pennywise first, and we've got the um, low poly and high poly. 3D models and let's just open both of them and see how both of them look and let me delete the cube and I'm just going to move the high poly to the left and high poly to the right so this is the low poly looks like this high poly looks like this right so we've got a bit more detail in here um especially the skin for or sorry the clothing folds and stuff is a bit more fancy and this 3D model is quite small in real life. So I'm very curious how this is going to look. So let's go to, I'm just going to go to cycles mode for a sec and set this to denoise. And I'm just going to quickly add an environment texture as well. HDRI, just so we can get some nice lighting in here to just, you know, instantly see how this looks. Let's go to rendered view and let's see. Let me hide the background transparent. And here we go. We got the low poly and the high poly 3D models of Pennywise. And they actually look quite good. Both the low and the high poly look incredibly detailed because, well, it's mostly texture. Let's be honest. Even the skin, uh, the clothing folds and stuff. And um, that's basically just, you know, texturing on there, right? Which is beautiful. Now, you can also see that if I rotate this, the back of this model is a bit more dark. So the reason the back is in more of a shadow is because the images I took were with shadow on the back of this object as well. So if you want this to be evenly lit, you would have to do it in an overcast lighting, like a cloudy day. Today it was a bit sunny here. Or um, do it indoors where you have a lot of lights pointed at the object. Um, or a very bright light in general. Um, but just make sure you don't have that much shadow. But for now, I don't really care about the back of this object it's still if i rotate this to the light it still works fine and um, even though the other side is a bit more um light but it's totally fine the 3d model looks really good um so let's just go over how to clean this up a little bit more as well so to clean this up there's a few things we can do and by default there's always a bit of a weirdness going on at the bottom so where it's gonna um, cut it off basically the model and this one was done with AI masking, right, and which I showed you, and that means that it's gonna try and cut out the actual model from the background, right, from the table it was standing on. Now, if I import the other one, so let's import the um, OBJ of the bear as well. Let's see how that turned out. High and low poly. There we go. Let me move that, rotate, and let me move the low poly to the left as well. You can see they actually look really good as well, right? Both the low and the high poly. Low poly perhaps even better because we don't get the weird shading on it. Um, but generally, it captured the textures really, really well. And the clothing folds and stuff too. It looks really nice. Um, but this is without object masking, which means the entire surface of the <laughs> below the bear is captured as well while the surface below pennywise is not there um, but we can just do some cleaning up and let's do that for the 
low poly on the bear because I like the fluffy look. And let's just do it for the high poly on Pennywise, right? Why not? So to do that, um, when we go into edit mode, there's a lot of loose geometry at the bottom. And I just want to cut it off right at the feet. And for this model, I don't want the stand on the bottom and um, because, well, it doesn't look that great. Okay. And for this one, I just want to cut it off somewhere below that surface as well. So we can use it to place on other surfaces. So to do that, it's actually quite simple. Um, and this is the easiest way. And by no means am I interested in going entirely around this object to clean it up the best I can. Um, and not at all. Uh, but you could perhaps just, you know, select the entire bottom edge loop in your masked object by double clicking or alt clicking. You could press SZ0 and just move that down um, to get like a sharp corner, a sharp kind of look. Um, but I'm just going to do it differently. And this is a method that works for pretty much any 3D scan that you do on a flat surface, um, which is beneficial. Um, and let's, I'll, I'll just show it to, to you. Go in edit mode with your object selected, press A. And we can actually then go to a feature that is called bisect. And my default this is set to knife. But if you go to the knife tool and press and hold, we can set this to bisect. And that means that if we are in, for example, front or side view, we can draw a line, for example, here to the left, and we can specify exactly where our model is going to get cut off. Let's say there. And to see how this is going to look after bisecting, we can open up the menu and click on clear outer. And we could even do fill, right? By default, this is just going to be an empty kind of space, but we can fill it up as well. And it's just going to close it down. It looks weird, but let's be honest, we're going to place this on a surface anyway, or perhaps add um, a new texture to that. Um, so we can leave that clear, or we can fill it up um, depending on what you want. I'm just going to fill it up for fun. Um, and now we see we have got a tiny little bit of mesh there, and we can just drag this line up a tiny bit until all of the mesh is gone. Right, if I drag this mode to the bottom, you can see we get more of that surface, but more to the top, and the entire mesh will be gone, like that. Now to apply that, just select another tool, like the select box, um, and it will be applied. There we go, left click, and this is our new model, right? Beautiful. Now, uh, we can just add a new material to the bottom if we want, right? New, assign, make it black, for example, doesn't really matter. Right, um, it looks a bit odd because, well, <laughs> let's be honest, this is not a good face to fill this up with, um, but I don't care. Um, but what we can do is try to just triangulate that like the rest of the mesh. If we do triangulate faces, it's just going to fill it up and those weird shadows will still be there. But, you know, it's just what you prefer. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do any kind of manual work there because it's not needed. This is going to be standing on services anyway, so I'm totally okay with this. And for the bear, we can do the same thing. Go into edit mode, numpad 1, or control numpad 1. And we can press alt Z to go out of x-ray mode, if you are in x-ray mode. And we can then choose the bisect tool once again. And I'm going to draw a nice line from here. Press A first to select everything from there to the bottom. And I'm going to try to follow that angle of the mesh a bit like that. Clear outer or clear inner, whatever works. And there we go. So this is now the mesh I've got. Looks fine, but I'm going to rotate this slightly um, because I want to get rid of this as well, actually. So perhaps we can just try to rotate our face. You can just rotate that, as you can see, to work like that. That's better. And then just apply that by selecting a different tool and left-clicking. And now we can just press all Z X-ray modes, select the lasso tool, and we can just delete whatever there is that is not connected to the bear, delete vertices. And there we go. Now we got a beautiful looking bear. All right, nice. So I didn't fill this one up, but it's the same as we did before. I'm just gonna leave that like this. And I'm actually going to rotate this so it is straight like that. Beautiful. All right, there we go. We got one object, we got two objects. Amazing. We could just add a floor to that or a table. There we go. And we can scale down our models. I don't think the scaling is um, real size at all. Um, so we can just scale that down and place it on the table, for example. Right? Like that. So they are 
connected with the environment. Beautiful. All right, so that is pretty much how you add these objects um, into Blender and clean them up a little bit as well. I usually like to just try and create that, um, that surface, that, that straight surface at the bottom um, without any kind of surface below it. Um, and this is looking quite good. So that's how you 3D scan with Kiri Engine and add it to your Blender. Do a little bit of cleanup, but nothing that requires too much skill or effort, I would say. It's just a bisect tool and cut it off where you want it to be cut off, right? Beautiful, just like that. Um, so I think this is, is pretty all right. And if you want to use this later on as well, I would suggest to set your origin points to the right places. Um, so for this one, I can just select one of the lower vertices like that. Shift S cursor to select it. Right mouse origin to 3D cursor. And now when we scale this down and up, it will be scaling from the feet, which is nice. All right, same thing for the bear. We can just select, for example, a point on the left. Hold Shift, select a point on the right. Shift S cursor to select it. We'll add the cursor in the middle. Right mouse origin to 3D cursor. And that is just going to scale the bear from that origin point. And then you can set it as your assets and save it and reuse it anytime you want. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so that was basically it. Now go ahead and make some 3D scans and preferably in good lighting and outside. I hope this tutorial worked um, out for you. So you have your own 3D models. It's very fun to just have some personalized items here. I found this one in a nice cute store nearby um, and this one goes way back I suppose um, so yeah thank you so much and if you like the video please leave a like a comment subscribe we would enjoy any one of those and then we'll see you in the next one cheers